When people see footage of open outcry trading, it usually looks like complete chaos. But in reality, there's a rather simple order to trading that you will understand by the time this video is finished. When most people think about stock prices, they're thinking of quotes. A quote is the most recent price at which a trade was made. But when I was a commodity futures trader at the Chicago Board of Trade floor, my boss didn't want to know a quote when he asked me the question, what's the market? See, he wanted to know what's commonly referred to as the bid and the ask. For most of trading's history, people had to execute orders in the trading pits, but obviously the invention of the internet changed all of that. What you're seeing here is an example of an electronic trading market. When I traded corn futures in the pit, I had a tablet computer around my neck the entire day so I could trade in the electronic market as well as the open outcry market in the trading pits on the floor. Let's use an example of electronic trading first just for visual purposes. The bid is the highest priced buy order currently in the market as represented right here. As you can see, there are several other bids slash buy orders below this price. The ask is the lowest offer slash sell order currently in the market. Naturally, there are several other offers above the ask as well. What you are currently seeing, it's important to realize, is just an example. It's a moment frozen in time. In reality, even during moments when the bid and the ask hold steady, the number of contracts being bid on and offered at any given price is constantly changing, quite frequently. Humans and or their computer programs are always making new orders and canceling previous ones. For instance, if I place an order to buy 10 contracts at $5.07, the total number of contracts at the bid will now be 29. Now here's a question I want you all to answer. Will my bid order be filled? Am I guaranteed to buy 10 contracts? No, not at all. See, a bid is not necessarily a trade. Taking another instance from outside of the trading world. If someone is trying to scalp a ticket to the Super Bowl, I can bid $100 less than what that person is asking. But if I want to guarantee myself that seat, I quote, take the offer in trading parlance, meaning I pay the full asking price. Really, the bid and the ask is sort of like a standoff between the scalper asking $1,000 for the Super Bowl ticket and me bidding $900, hypothetically assuming we can only trade in $100 increments. Who will blink? In trading parlance, who will give up the edge? And the reason I use $100 increments as an example is to illustrate that one cent increment in stocks or a quarter of a cent in futures, while seemingly superficial, can add up to huge money. Every quarter of a cent tick and one contract on the futures market and the corn futures market that I'm showing you right now is equal to $12.50. So if you had 100 contracts, either long or short, Every single tick, each quarter of a cent tick is going to be worth $1,250. And outright futures can move very, very quickly. So obviously, there's tremendous amounts of an advantage to getting the edge, quote unquote. You can see why it's that important. In fact, getting the edge is the sole reason why I was hired by my boss in the first place. It's the reason why I was in the pits instead of exclusively on a computer. See, my boss didn't want to stand in the pits all day, but he did want someone down there who could get the edge from people outside the pits submitting orders through their brokers. Now back to our computer example. With online orders, you have two options, market orders and limit orders. A market order is an immediate surrendering of the edge. You pay whatever the market is at the time the order is placed. When buying, you take the lowest offer and while selling, you hit the highest bid. Limit orders only execute at a specific price that you name. Now in the pits, it's much the same. The key difference in the pits is only the current bid and the ask are seen by anybody. If you're a broker with a limit order that is off the market, in other words, it's below the bid price or above the offer price, you absolutely must shut your big fat mouth.
That's the biggest rule that there is. So in other words, if there are if there's a trader or traders who are actively bidding, I can either join that bid at the same price or I can raise the bid even further or take the offer. What I absolutely cannot do is go below the current bid, nor can I go higher than the current asking price. And believe you me, if you make the mistake of doing either one of those things, the veterans down there will let you hear about it. I'll never forget when the world's skinniest six foot four white haired man screamed in my 24 year old face, you're off the f-ing market when I undercut somebody's bid. And at that moment, what can you do other than say, uh, sorry? You see, there's not a lot of tolerance for the young, new, tall guy standing in everybody's way. And I learned that lesson rather quickly. But he had a right to be mad because this is indeed keep staying on the market, not undercutting somebody's bid or going above somebody's offer. That is the order of the market right there. So how does one avoid being off the market? Well, first, because corn, corn futures traded in a quarter cent increments, you have four main hand, hand signals. So you've got a whole cent, you've got a quarter of a cent, you've got a half a cent, and then you've got three quarters of a cent known in the pits as the orders. Now, why do they call it the orders? Because three quarters takes a lot longer to say, and time is money, especially in the pits. So in the pits, if I wanted to bid 10 contracts at $5 and seven and a half cents each, I would say while hand signaling seven and a half for 10. Conversely, if I wanted to sell, I would flip my palms outward and flip the phrasing of the order and say, sell 10 at seven and a half. See with bids, you say the price first and with offers, the quantity is said first followed by the price. Another thing that keeps order in the pits. Now, of course, I can just stand in the pits, neither actively bidding nor offering. But if I like somebody else's bid or offer, I can point at them and yell, sold. And just like that, a trade is made. Quickly after that, we both write down the trade, the price and the quantity on our cards and also our corresponding badge info. See, my, this is my old badge right here. So the person who traded with me would write down my badge, Z-O-U, and then they would write down my clearinghouse number, 006. Quickly after that, we both, after writing down all of that, we check the trade by confirming the price with each other visually and with hand signals. I'd be like, hey, I sold you 10 or I bought 10 and you'd say, check if everything's okay. And then the next morning, if there's any discrepancy, you have to resolve it with the trader and the clearing firms. Now, from my experience, it's always obvious who messed up. It's always resolved pretty easily. So again, a remarkably orderly experience considering how chaotic open outcry trading looks to the layperson when seen on television and depicted in movies, etc., etc. So hope you enjoyed this little look inside the trading world. I'm John Miller. See you next time.